Morning, everyone. Morning. House Democrats are continuing our efforts to fight for the American people, to put people over politics, to lean into the issues that everyday Americans care about, lower costs, better paying jobs, safer communities, defending democracy, fighting for freedom, protecting the public interest, and ensuring economic opportunity in every single zip code. House Democrats are here to fight for everyday Americans. Republicans continue to spend their time fighting each other for power, position, and over personality. It's our hope that we can find common ground. We continue to extend the hand of partnership to our colleagues on the other side of the aisle but implore them to focus on issues that the American people care about. Let's work together. Following the leadership of President Joe Biden, whose record continues to move things in an incredibly positive direction for the American people. Wages are up, inflation is down, and more than 10 million jobs have been created under the leadership of President Joe Biden. That's a strong economic track record of success, particularly given the mess that President Biden inherited from the previous administration. But instead of trying to find ways to work together, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle continue to lean into an extreme mega Republican agenda which seems to be focused on trying to investigate the president's family, not make a difference in the lives of everyday Americans, and that's quite unfortunate. Questions? Heather? Yes, sir. Um, George Santos, one of your delegation members, so far five Republicans have called for him to resign, including four in New York. Do you think that he should resign, um, and do you expect Democrats to try to take any action to force some kind of help to happen for him? Well, the spectacle that is George Santos speaks for itself. He's a complete and total fraud, lied to the voters of the 3rd Congressional District in New York, <clears throat> deceived and connived his way into Congress, and it's now the responsibility of House Republicans to do something about it. There are ongoing investigations. The Nassau County District Attorney investigating George Santos. The Queens County District Attorney investigating George Santos. The State Attorney General investigating George Santos. Apparently, the U.S. Attorney from the Eastern District of New York investigating George Santos. Brazilian authorities investigating George Santos. And ethics complaints have been filed calling for an investigation of George Santos. This is not a partisan issue, but it is an issue that Republicans need to handle. Clean up your house. And you can start with George Santos. Have you made a decision as to whether you'll appoint members to this uh, church select committee? Uh, we're still uh, evaluating the dynamics as it relates to um, the Select Committee on Insurrection Protection, which seems to be designed to obstruct justice and execute upon an agenda that many of my Republican colleagues have said is anchored in ultimately wanting to defund the FBI. Again, why don't we anchor ourselves in this Congress in fighting for the priorities of the American people, address quality of life issues, try to continue to improve public safety, deal with cost of living concerns, that everyday Americans have. That's the focus of Democrats. But Republicans have begun to implement what we suspected would be an extreme MAGA Republican 
right-wing agenda. On Monday, the Republicans come to the floor of the House of Representatives and they bring a bill that is designed to help the wealthy, the well-off, and the well-connected cheat on their taxes, avoid paying their fair share as part of some effort to subsidize the lifestyles of the rich and shameless. That's Monday. Then on Tuesday, empower a select committee to obstruct justice and protect insurrectionists as part of this journey to ultimately defund the FBI. And then on Wednesday, they made it clear they're going to do everything possible to impose a nationwide ban on abortion, detonate reproductive freedom, criminalize abortion care, and impose government-mandated pregnancies on the American people. That's what their legislation yesterday was all about. That's this week in extreme mega Republican land. It's quite unfortunate. We remain committed to trying to find common ground to solve problems that the American people care about. We also remain committed to a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions. That's a big difference between House Democrats and the extreme MAGA Republican agenda. Back to the other side. Back. Let me simply say, I'm, it's clear to me that um, George Santos is not fit to serve in the United States Congress. That's not my perspective. That's not a Democratic perspective. Three to four of my Republican colleagues, his next-door neighbors in New York, have said George Santos is not fit to serve in Congress. Now, it's interesting because many of us are wondering, how did Republicans let this happen? How did you get behind someone like George Santos, who is so clearly a fraudster? Santos didn't even have a Republican primary. Think about that. He didn't even have a Republican primary. They cleared the field for him, and now they're running away from him. But why did you clear the field for George Santos? Why did you back him not just in 2022, but they backed him in 2020 as well against Tom Swasey? I believe that two members of the New York City congressional delegation, Richie Torres and Dan Goldman, have acted in this regard. I was well aware of their decision to do so, but any matters before the Ethics Committee are before the Ethics Committee and should be resolved by members of the Ethics Committee. I've made my appointments to the Ethics Committee. They take seriously their responsibility to be judicious, to be fair, to evaluate the facts, apply the applicable law, and let's see what happens as it relates uh, to the matter that has been before the Ethics Committee. Senator Jeffrey, on the classified documents, we've learned that the President was informed of the initial classified documents on the same day they were found more than two months ago. Are you concerned the White House didn't disclose this sooner? I have full faith and credit in President Biden. I uh, believe that he's doing everything to take the appropriate steps to determine what happened. 
uh, and how to move forward in a responsible fashion, uh, and I'm confident that he will continue to do so. What does it say to you that documents have been found at another location? Again, I haven't been briefed uh, on the full set of facts in this regard, but I have full faith in President Joe Biden. Yeah, House Democrats are prepared to continue to fight for the American people, for working families, middle class folks, senior citizens, young people, veterans, the poor, the sick, the afflicted, the least, the lost, the left behind, everyday Americans. That's why we come to Washington at our core to make life better for the people. That's what unifies House Democrats. That's what we believe in. Those are the challenges that we, as members of Congress, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, all of us should be tackling together. And it's very unfortunate that we've seen this extreme MAGA Republican agenda, which is apparently anchored in impeachment and investigation, focused on witch hunts, not working families. We're going to keep our focus on working families. Two more questions. Well, it's my hope that we will tackle uh, our border situation and the need for comprehensive immigration reform in a responsible and bipartisan way. We as Democrats stand ready to have those conversations with our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle seem to want to politicize the issue, not solve problems. But if there are responsible individuals who want to tackle these challenges together, we stand ready to do that. It's my view that we should not allow extreme MAGA Republicans to determine who serves on committees in the 118th Congress on the Democratic side. What's your reaction to McCarthy saying that the last Congress, House Democrats set a precedent by removing Gosar and Marjorie Taylor Greene? What's, what's your reaction? The same answer. Thank you, Congressman. Last so, question. Ayanna yeah. Pressley, she called the GOP's Insurrection Protection Committee a sham. She said the federal government has already been weaponized by Republicans against black, brown, and other marginalized groups. Do you agree? Well, I agree that the so-called select committee to investigate the investigators, obstruct justice, and protect insurrectionists is not something that the American people expect responsible representatives to do on their behalf. I traveled the country in the previous six months in advance of November. Not a single person, not a single Democrat, not a single independent, not a single Republican ever suggested to me or anyone who I was there to interact with in all types of places throughout America indicated that this was their priority, to launch select committees to investigate this, that, or the other person, uh, to engage in a revenge tour on behalf of some of the more extreme elements of the other side of the aisle, or do the bidding of the former president at Mar-a-Lago, who appears to be continuing to exert significant control over the extreme MAGA Republicans here in Congress. Let us do the business of the American people. Focus on kitchen table pocketbook issues. Solve problems on their behalf. That is what House Democrats will continue to do. I hope Republicans will someday soon decide to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jeffries, Mr. Scalise just landed at your feet about Santos saying that 